How are you doing? How's everything? Uh, good. Yeah, I can't complain. Uh, busy over here, like always. Like always. All right. Now, as like last time you spoke with Calf Kick Sports, you spoke about your five year plan and that you were planning to be retired by 31. And I was asking uh, if you had re- reassessed your views about your five year plan in the two years since you last spoke. Um, I mean, yeah, as I was saying earlier, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what retirement really means. Like, I feel like I'm retired right now. Like I, again, every day I get to do what I love to do. I know, I know most people aren't, uh, you know, lucky or just can't afford to be in that position. So I'm, I'm very blessed to be able to, again, do what I want to do every day. Like, then this is what I mean. Like if I'm re- like as retired, like, uh, I mean, whether I was making a billion dollars, like making, I would be doing this for, I mean, I'd be doing this for free regardless. I mean, I wouldn't tell anyone that, but this is, what I love to do, and I'd be doing it no matter what. Phenomenal. Uh, you do have some, like, a lot of good talent I see at your gym. Uh, you got uh, Pumi Nakuta? Pumi Nakuta. That guy, again, I know I always tell people this. I'm biased, but that guy, hands down, in my opinion, is the best flyweight on the planet. Again, the guy's as biased as I am. Like, I see what the guy's capable of. I see what these other guys are capable of. Um, I've been able to, again, I'm lucky enough to have been able to train with like a lot of good guys over in other gyms too. Um, so I can uh, low key be able to assess kind of wherever I think everyone's at. And, you know, I know everyone doesn't show their full deck of cards, but I know for a fact, I'm telling you like that, what that guy can do is true. If he was given the opportunity tomorrow, he would beat Pantoja without a doubt in my mind. And I really do say that um, confidently. Um, unfortunately, it's just one of those situations where I think uh, he might not necessarily be granted that position because they don't want necessarily a guy like him as a champion, which I'm not really sure what the reason for that would be. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm just some guy sitting on his couch, but I think uh, Pantoja has got a, at least a lucky break from the judges in his last fight. Uh, I don't, I, mean, I don't, what were you going to say? I was going to say, look, I, I don't mean like, uh, I don't mean to disrespect any fighter when I try to, I, I try to be as objective as possible when I just try to break down everyone's skill set and um, everything like that. Um, but Pantoja, like, what can you say he's really good at? Like, no. he's, he's just, he's a tough, first of all, tough motherfucker. I think everyone would give him credit for that. His jujitsu looks solid, looks really good. Um, but if you're going to tell me that's the best flyweight on the planet, there's just no fucking way. I refuse to believe that. Other, uh, Like, I think there's, I just really believe that there's so many guys that could go in there tomorrow if given the opportunity. But right now, I think where the UFC's at, where maybe the world's at, um, they're not looking for the best. They're looking for, you know, the best Most business. marketable. Yeah, absolutely. Which again, as a business, I totally understand. But again, like when I started watching the sport and getting into it when I was young, like I, I, again, it, you come in because you want to have this belief that like, Hey, whoever holds that belt is the best guy on the planet. That's what it signifies. And that's what it should signify, whether, you know, the closest you can get to it, whatever it means. But, um, I think the more and more as time goes on, uh, the UFC is less, uh, again, maybe more uh, and like MMA promotions or just people in general are less looking for that, more looking for how can we make the most bang for our buck? You know, how can we market the, whoever can, we can market the easiest? Um, that's what they're looking for. And it is what it is. Like, those are the guys that are going to get the uh, easiest road to those positions. But I just think if you're undeniable, you're undeniable. And I know we got guys that are really undeniable that are going to be in those positions and be able to shut up a lot of people. Yeah, I think Pumi, uh, he, he's a savage when I see him. His movement, when he's standing, like, just constantly moving, constantly in and out, like, with this. And then he takes you down and he mauls you on the ground. This guy's a savage. Yeah, I think he's going to fit in perfectly in the UFC. And I think he's more of the archetype of the newer, I think, like, the Steve Ursag, the uh, Tatsuo Tyras, like, the, the more well-rounded. Uh, no, absolutely. I, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's... As a business move, I almost want to explain to like uh, Nick Maynard and the UFC guys, like, dude, this is like, as a business move, this is would actually be a great move to have a guy like that on your roster. Like, you got so much young talent. Do you want to see, respectfully, do you want to see Pantoja Roy Val Seven? Like, is that really what we're looking for right now? Like, I would love to see a guy like Tatsuo or uh, even like, and I don't even think the guys at that level, like a Manel Cape. You know, if the guy can make weight, like, there are guys that should be in those positions that for some reason they're just not putting in those positions you know capes he's a great striker i don't know if he's like the all-around mma guy no but he can talk i mean he can talk i guess a little bit and again that's what i'm saying you can talk a little bit you're gonna get you're gonna get afforded certain positions that you probably based on merit shouldn't but it just is what it is yeah it's not that deep uh in that division so a little goes a long way i would say um 
Uh, just a step back. So you said you're retired. Are you not planning to fight at any time in the future? I mean, that's what I kind of try to explain to most people. Like, eh, not in the longest way, but like, um, I mean, I I love this sport. Like, I if I do it, I want to do it the right way. And I really not sure if I can at this moment do it the way I would want to. Um, and I would never try to disrespect the sport by going halfway in. Like, I, it sucks because like. Yeah, I'm not saying this is the right mentality at all. In fact, I'm probably tell people it's the wrong mentality going to the sport. But like for me, I'm kind of all or nothing. Like if I'm if I'm gonna be in it, I'm gonna be in it. Like I'm I'm you know I'm gonna do everything I can, um, and I'm going for as high as I can. You know, like and if and then from there it just is what it is. But like I know a lot of guys they come into it and they're just like ah you know I just want to have some fun, do this stuff. And this to me, I just I could never really. Uh, I can never really get that attitude with the sport. Like for me, it's just too, and maybe it's, again, maybe it's too much so, but it, to me, it's just like, if I'm doing this, I'm going all in, like I'm going to take it as far as I can. And if I'm not going to do that, then I'm just not going to do it. Um, yeah. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like I have a lot of things uh, outside of the gym that I love, which I never really thought I'd again, be in that position. So um, yeah, right now, unfortunately, I just love my life too much. So uh you know, good. I don't need good. to get into it. Yeah, no, it's a good problem to have, but like, I don't need to get a fist. I don't need to get into a fist fight on a random side. If I do feel like I need to, then I will. But right now, I'm just, it's unfortunate because I'm very happy with where I'm at. So it's just, yeah, that's where I'm at in my life. No, right that's now. that's great to hear. You often see with fighters, uh, they don't know what to do once fighting is done. They don't have anything outside of this. So it's great to see that you do have that. You have mm -hmm. a life outside of fighting. It's great to hear. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting so <laughs> dramatic here. Anywho, uh, Frivola, does Matt Frivola have something coming up soon? Uh, he's trying to get anyone on Paris. Like that's he. That's kind of his slogan right now. Like anyone in Paris, he'll fight. He'll fight anyone. He'll fight his grandma in Paris right now. Like he just. Wants to get <laughs> to Paris. Um, that's really all he's kind of looking for. But like in the meantime, he's just been helping everyone out at the gym. Like Frivola is just. I always tell people, salt of the earth. Like one of the best guys you'll know. Um he really just give you the shirt off his back. Like just a great guy. And he, uh, you know, if he doesn't have a fight coming up, he's just helping out the guys. And he, right now he has his first baby coming up. So oh. he's really just, yeah, he's just been focusing on that, which again, more power to him. Like, yeah, I definitely, God bless him. I would definitely focus on that while he can, you know, yeah, congrats to Matt on that. Matt and his, his, his lady. on that. That's awesome. So, all right. UFC Paris got the baby coming. Matt Favola. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Marab versus Sugar Sean O'Malley. Has that been, that's not been announced or? Like... I don't think it's been signed or anything like that, but by all indications from everyone, it seems like it's something they're looking for in September in the sphere. Um, again, I don't want to speak for anyone, but that seems like where it's leaning towards and what a phenomenal opportunity for Marab. That is a phenomenal opportunity. How do you see that fight going? <laughs> um, again, like, I don't want to, <laughs> like uh discount no i really like uh like as goofy as o'malley and his coach are i you know you got to respect what they're capable of you 100 percent. especially look they uh they have a win over this team technically already you know so like um you can't discredit what the guy's capable of doing um i just think marab is really a different animal i know it's gonna be a hard fight like no matter how i look at it i do think it's gonna be a war i really believe that it's gonna be a battle but i just think it's a battle where marab ends up on top Definitely, definitely. That's that's. I mean, that's how I see it going. Uh, Hopefully, God, God willing. That's that's what we're all. That's what we yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's how I saw it going with Aljo, and unfortunately, that's unfor Yes, unfortunately, we also saw all all saw the same. Uh, thought the same thing too, but and the sports, the sports rough, man. I want to just feel like uh, the, the video of Sean's coach going, Aljo, you gotta go. I want to say that that actually affected Al Aljo. That's what uh, I, hope. I, I don't think Aljo really <laughs> cared about that much. It was more just like, again, it just tells us more about like Tim Welch as a coach, you know, like that's mm -hmm. like, okay. So like, that's, that's how you want to get this done. But again, like it, it's fine. Like I really, you know, it's, it's tough. Cause like, I like a lot of what Tim Welch says. I listen to his interviews too, like, and stuff like that. He comes off very well. Uh, but you know, for example, like after the fight, he goes like, Oh no, respect, respect. It's like, Dude, like you can't be talking the way you're talking and then think exactly. it's all respect afterwards, you know? Like it'd be the same thing as what's his name? Like uh, Dylan Dennis, like after the way he talks, like going, Oh yeah, respect, respect. It's like, nah, dude, that's not how this works. Like you wanted to talk, like now we're in this position, like we're not cool anymore. Like uh, again, like I get it, it's you're trying to sell the fight and all that stuff, but like nah, these are these are still very 
these are violent people we're dealing with. So Definitely. if you want to, if you want to act like that, then just be ready. I, I was, I heard in a previous interview, you were talking about how you're a fan of the trash talk in MMA. And you mentioned how you like Colby Covington, how he can back it up. Right. But yeah, since, right. since that interview, <laughs> he, he talked a lot to Leon Edwards and then it seemed like it was too much for him and he couldn't back it up. Like, Right, so, oh wait, I want to go back real quickly. I'm not really, I'm not sure my exact words. I say a lot of things. So I, can't <laughs> certain I said those words, but like, I'm, no, I'm a fan of Colby Covington's style. I almost guarantee that's what I said. Like, I'm definitely a fan of the way Colby fights. Like when I say style, like his fight style, um, not in that last fight, but no, yeah. like as like a, I, I grew up wrestling in high school. Like I know how difficult it is to wrestle and the way he fights is he makes that a grueling 25 minute wrestling match. And that's just, that shit is not easy. You can ask anybody. And that to me is super respectful. Like, I always like Colby coming up that way. Cause even before all the trash talk stuff, I actually hate the trash talk, uh, trash talk. Oh, really? stuff. Well, from him, like, it's just, <laughs> like if, if it's genuine, it's real. Like, I, I think it's pretty cool, but like, if it's that stuff, then like, dude, like get that out. I don't, I don't think it's too genuine coming from no, it's, it's just not genuine. Like, and again, like you can, people, people can smell that out from a mile away. And I just think, uh, like Colby's like, Normally, his fight style should do the talking itself. Like, dude, this guy's on you for 25 minutes, and if you can't get him off him, that's a night. That's a rough night. And uh, like, again, like that's what I'm saying. Like the way Colby. Uh, look, I, to be fair to Colby and Leon, I thought it was an indictment on both of them that last fight, just in the sense of like Colby, dude, you talk that trash and you fought like that. I don't care if you have a broken toe, broken foot, like your yeah. fucking lungs are like whatever. Just like, dude, you talk like that, you go in there and die for that shit. Like, you know that's. You're, you're Man. You're already in the fight. Absolutely. Like, just do what you got to do. Like, but again, I think Colby Cummings already kind of checked out, honestly, like, in my opinion, but it is what it is. And uh, again, then this is not to disrespect because I love Leon Edwards, actually. I love this fight stuff from day one, too. Um, dude, the guy, the guy was talking that talk. Like, you you know, you're up three. Dude, go and murder this man. Yeah. He can't take you down. He can't hurt you on the feet. I, I don't even know what I'm looking at at that point. I'm like, dude, like, I know you want to get the win. But you can get this win and never like have this guy never talk about you ever again. Like you can highlight real out of this. And he looked like he was uh with all due respect, like happy, just squeaking out the decision. Yeah, um, just point fighting and then, which uh, again, like I get it, it's the highest level. Like, you know, I'm not I'm not I've never been in that position. I don't know what that pressure feels like, but at the same time, it's like, dude, I, I don't care if it's on the street, I don't care if it's in the parking lot, like the way this guy's talking, like you go do what you gotta do. You got 10 minutes, you're probably up three rounds. Go and try to kill this man. If he takes you down, you get back. Like, this is now this is the same rules as it was in the schoolyard as it is today. You know, like, you got to go after a guy like that. Yeah, yeah. I was pretty disappointed. I Like, as a guy who's been to those arenas cheering for Kobe, uh, to the detriment of, of myself, it seems. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, I'm just a fan of a, of a good fighter, you know. Uh, I was there when he fought Usman and... The first time, and that was a phenomenal fight. Uh, Absolutely, no, no takedowns. But you know, I just, I just wish he could back it up. And it definitely seems like he's more checked out at this point. Uh, it's unfortunate. Um, I saw that uh, Aljo has been calling out Movsar Evloev. That would be. I think that'd be a great fight for him. That is an insane fight. There, yeah. I think that that needs to be like a main event somewhere. Five rounds. Yeah. No, I think that's a grapplers. That's a grapplers kind of fight. Like I'm mm -hmm. sure those could be some very fun scrambles. And typically, too, like <laughs> I don't know if necessarily it would be this fight, but like you see a lot of the guys that uh, are grappling heavy, they end up being in like a striking fight. So you could definitely see that being like a back and forth but on the feet, like um, kind of fight too. So I don't. I, I I love the matchup. I think it's one of those where, and it's just my opinion. No one's told me anything on it in the sense in this sense. But like I don't think the UFC really knows what to do with Mosar. They definitely don't seem to like him very much. Respect. I don't. I don't see anybody calling that dude out. Yeah. Um. But Aljo, I think it's funny because I think he's almost in like the reverse role of where he used to be. Where like I think the UFC again, like I know they're never gonna agree, like agree with this stuff, but like they were definitely looking for guys to try and take Aljo out. And now Aljo's almost in the other role where it's like, dude, we don't know what to do with this Evlo guy. Like you want to try and take him out for us? Like you know, take out one contender. Um. And I think. Uh, Good win over a guy like Evloev, like you never know in this sport. Like you could get right be in uh, be right entitled contention. Like you just never know what the timing of how this sport works out. Like if uh, a big win like that gets you pretty far. I, I do like the fight, but it's like the way I look at it. If it is like a grapplers like fight, then uh, people are gonna hate that fight. Like the majority of fans are gonna say this I, is the most boring fight I've ever seen. 
I hate Aljo. And it's like, dude, this is mixed martial arts. arts. Yeah. Well, I also, I guess it just depends on the type of grappling fight it is. Like, if it's like a grappling fight where, like, one guy's in control the whole time on top, then, yeah, I think then they might not be as uh, much of a fan of it. But I just don't think their styles match up in that way where it would be. I think it would be a lot of scrambling. Like, it'd be more uh, reminiscent of, like, you know, like a Caro Parisian, like Diego Sanchez or, like, Mm. uh, Nick Diaz. We're just, like, they're going back and forth. They're on the ground. They're really, they're making it a fun fight. Um, and if you know what you're looking at on the ground, then I think it's going to be like a phenomenal for people. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Like when people are complaining about the ground game, I'm like, dude, just go to a jujitsu class for like a week. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like you would appreciate that ground game so much more if you would just go to a class. <laughs> so if Aljo gets that fight, gets past Evloev, how do you see Aljo versus Taporia going? Well, again, like the sport, dude, this sport makes no sense. Like, you never know. Like, it could be Topori, it could be Holloway, it could be neither of them. It could be, you know what I'm saying? Like, you never really know how this sport goes. So, like, matchup wise, like, it's all those are tough fights. No matter how you look at it at that at that level, they're all going to be tough fights. Evlo is going to be a tough fight. Like, everyone um, is going to be difficult. It really just comes down to who's going to show up on game day and be able to impose their game plan um, with their skill set. And from there, that's I don't know whatever you believe in. That's on God, whatever. That it just is what it is. All you can do is put all the odds in your favor, train as hard as you can, put everything in your favor, and then the results, the result. You know. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm looking forward that to that fight happening. Uh, you know, uh, when Aljo after Aljo defeats Mosar, looking forward to him facing Ilya Taporia or whoever. You know, who knows who will be there? As you're saying. Uh, Ilya could tear his ACL tomorrow, and then... That's what I'm saying. This sport, dude, this sport makes <laughs> sense. You just got to be ready at any moment. Just to uh, switch up a little bit here, uh, I wanted to ask your opinion on Jake Paul versus Mike Perry. That sucks, man. That's... That, <laughs> that sucks that this is, like... I don't mean this is just, like, uh, for you. I just mean this in general, that this is even, like, a topic of conversation nowadays, but, like, this motherfucker, Jake Paul, he's good. Like, he was able oh, to... Oh, yeah. Uh, he's smart. Um... I mean, it's boxing. Uh, Jay Paul should be a better boxer. He's bigger. You know, he's got technically he's got a lot of those advantages. He actually knows how to box technically. I mean, what's his name? Mike Perry is just a fucking person. First of all, if it's a bare knuckle fight, I don't think anyone's beating Mike Perry. I think you could put Ching Kong in there. I don't think Mike Perry's mm-hmm. losing. In straight boxing, that's an interesting one. I'm still gonna go Perry because I just think he's gonna be tougher. Um, I think he's gonna be able to eat. Uh, what's his name? Paul's punches and just be able to move forward. And I don't think Paul's got, I mean, again, it's tough because I think the size would probably be the biggest detriment to Perry, but I think unfortunately, uh, yeah, Paul does have the size on him. He's actually got the boxing experience technically over him. It depends on how many rounds, like if they make that eight I mean, rounds, yeah, if they make, it's going to be eight rounds. Yeah. See, they really put all the advantages in Paul's favor then. Mm-hmm. So now look, he could, how about this? I'll go Paul by controversial decision. Okay. All right. Yeah, like the judges are yeah, going to definitely be yeah. in his favor. That's, that's how I see it going. Yeah. I I say Paul wins regardless. I don't really see... I mean, I do see that like Paul doesn't have the best footwork. And doesn't I feel... Best footwork, doesn't have the best awareness. Doesn't have the best... Look, at the end of the day, like he didn't grow up boxing. He didn't grow up fighting. Um, You see, like, how about this... You throw a punch at Mike Perry, he's not blinking. Like you play mm-hmm. different with a Jake Paul. You know he's gonna be reacting, and if he has the cardio to be able to keep doing that, that's fine. But um, I don't know, Mike Perry. He's just got. I guess he's got eight rounds to walk this dude down and see if he can do some damage. You know. And they've apparently sparred before, and Jake Paul is claiming that he was piecing him up for the first six rounds, and then Mike Perry said, "Yeah," and then you guys said you had to stop because you knew what was gonna happen in the next two rounds. I, I I vaguely believe I'm sure it's similar. Like I'm sure that story's not too far off, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's probably gonna go pretty similar, but I don't know if that two rounds will be enough for we like Mike Perry's gonna need the knockout at that point. Uh, yeah, I would think so, and that's I think that's what we're all rooting for. So <laughs> <laughs> that is what we're all rooting for, you know. Nice Mike Perry knockout. All right, I don't want to keep you all day. Uh, do you have any uh, sponsors or anything you want to shout out? Uh. Not really. I mean, I'll, I'll shout out my girlfriend. I'll shout out my gym. That's really about oh, yeah. it. You know? Shout everybody out. <laughs> uh, nah, I want to thank the guy. I mean, again, I just 
anytime I'm on one of these is again, I hopefully, I don't know if anyone's probably going to be watching this anyways, but like, I always just like to thank my gym. Like I'm very lucky to be here and I'm lucky to have a guy like Longo who's guided me throughout everything. Um, and I want to thank my girlfriend, I guess, because she. Are you guys still roommates? Uh, Aljo, no. I, oh, no, shoot. I thought you and uh, Longo were uh, roommates. No, no, no Aljo, Aljo. I Aljo, like, okay. Oh, no, Longo, Longo, I, I fucking lose my mind. <laughs> 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 but, um, but again, very thankful for him regardless. Now, he's he's the man. Like, Al, uh, Longo and Aljo, too. Like, those guys, no, without them, without the Iquintus, without the Widemans, like, there, this, there is no gym, you know? And those are the guys that, like, uh, you know, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Those are the giants. You know, I get to stand uh, on whatever. So I'm very lucky to be uh, a part of this team. Oh, yeah. Appreciate I Quinta. That was actually my first uh, UFC event here in Milwaukee when he fought uh, Kevin Lee the second oh, time. Oh, wow. That's yeah. crazy. That's a great <laughs> one, too. That's awesome. Yeah, great fight, dude. Great fight. Well, thank you, uh, Stephen Lee, for being here. My pleasure. Uh, at Steven Wee. That's me. On, on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Sounds good, Jermaine. Thank you so yeah. much for the time. No problem. Have a good one. Take care.